Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Uh, gonna do something a little different with this video. Uh, this isn't really going to be anything specific about Excel, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about the general concepts around data security using passwords. Uh, if you like this video, make sure and hit the thumbs up. Uh, also, uh, please uh, don't be afraid to, to subscribe to the channel. Um, so we're going to talk about today protecting access, access to your data, specifically your Excel data, using passwords. So we've been told for years that uh, any kind of network access, any kind of PC access needs a password. Now, what a password uh, uh, is used for is to obviously to keep somebody else from accessing the computer or the network. The, com the password needs to be something that is something only you know, but also something that someone else can't easily guess. And with the new um, artificial intelligence, if you pick simple passwords, uh, the AI will pick it up pretty quickly. So what are some of the criteria that we've used in the past and continue to use? A minimum of eight characters, uh, one upper, div upper division or uppercase character, uh, one number character, and one symbol character. And often you'll see some symbols are allowed, some symbols aren't. Um, but those are sort of the basics of a password. Um, generally, you'd want your password to be random, um, a random mixture of these uh, characters, these uppercase characters, lowercase characters, numbers, symbols. Uh, but that's not always the case. It's not always possible. Uh, it's not always practical. Um, I'm going to suggest some ways to make it a little more practical. Um, one thing you should do is don't try to memorize your passwords. You need to have them stored. Uh, it's amazing uh, how many passwords each one of us has uh, out there that we use for different sites. Um, I've got a password manager on my phone that literally, literally has hundreds of sites and passwords on it. Um, and I could never remember them, particularly if I was assigning random passwords. Uh, uh, that would be really hard. So th now what you don't want to do is write those passwords down. You don't want to put them in a notes file in your phone. You don't want to write them down on a note card. You don't want to have them on a piece of paper that's taped under your desk. You want these things stored somewhere where the storage is also secure, usually secured by a password. Um, but you don't want to try to memorize all your passwords, simply not possible. But you also don't want to write them down. So what I would suggest is use a password manager. Um, password managers are really great tools um, uh, and, and they allow you to save a lot of passwords and to change them uh, very frequently. Um, what about your notes on your phone though? Some of us have phones and we, we write a lot of things on our phones in the notes section. You can actually secure those with a password. Um, you can lock that note. Um, you can use either a password or you can use a fingerprint ID. Um, and once you have viewed the note, remember you have to relock it. Um, so you open a, a something, you, you unlock it, you look at it, you have to remember to relock it back when you're done with it. Uh, things that are normally password protected, you're going to have to use the password every single time. Not with the notes. You unlock it, you have to remember to relock it when you're done. Now, um, uh, to do that, uh, you're going to go to settings on your phone. You're going to click on notes, click on, then click on password and turn on use touch ID. That's how you would, you would use the fingerprint uh, uh, tool um, to open up your uh, notes that you have on your phone. Um, I have password manager. You can get them a lot of ways. I, I have an iron key um, uh, that I use. Uh, it actually um, uh, has a lot of stuff on it. And, I, and, and everything on my iron key, uh, which is made by Kingston, um, uh, it says Imation there. Imation's been bought by Kingston. Um, everything on that iron key is stored first up here, and it goes to an encryption chip, and then it's stored in a memory chip down here, and both those chips are encased in epoxy, and this is, I think, a titanium uh, cover. So this is it's very hard to get into it. Even if you get into it, you can't really get to the chips, and even if you got to the memory chip, it's encrypted, so how are you going to look at it, right? So I can save a lot of stuff. I could create a file, save it on this iron key, and then it would be uh, protected, because all I have to remember is the password to get into the iron key flash drive. So it's sort of a, a homemade password manager, if you will. Now here's something to remember. If you, if you uh, back this iron key up, the backup is not encrypted. So you would need to password protect it or save it somewhere, but the backup is not gonna be encrypted. So if you've got stuff on there that you really don't want people to see and you back it up, you gotta go back in and put passwords on those backup files. Um, uh, so I really like um, 
uh, the uh, uh, these passwords. And then the other nice thing about these, oftentimes they have uh, a lot of these items will have digital uh, keyboards, so you don't actually type on a keyboard. Uh, you have to be careful that your computer doesn't have a key logger, uh, because if it has a key logger and you're typing in passwords or account numbers or credit card numbers, it will pick up those keystrokes. Um, so a, a digital keyboard is really nice where you click on the keys on the keyboard, it brings it up and you click on those keys and that then um, uh, avoids, sort of bypasses the hard key uh, typing on your uh, keyboard. Um, but a password manager is a separate piece of software that will manage all your passwords, keep them in one place. It does a lot of things. First of all, it protects them because it's behind a firewall. Second, um, if you um, want to go go to a website, you don't actually sometimes have to even remember the password. Uh, the password manager I have, if I go to a particular website, it will. if that password and website is in my password manager, it will actually just load that up for me automatically because I've already logged into the phone securely, right? So now what it's all it's got to do is I type in the username, it's going to go through and it'll do a facial recognition to make before it gets into my password manager. But once it's in, it'll automatically load up the password and get me right into the website. So I don't even have to remember or even look at or type in the password, which is really nice. Um, here's some different password managers you can have. Uh, they, they have annual fees often uh, with them. Um, Doho is a good one out there right now, $12. Uh, uh, Keeper Password Manager is one Dashlane. Sticky Password. LastPass is the one I use. What the, you've got a free version you can get that's just, that you have it just for yourself. But if you want to be able to share that like with your spouse or your partner, um, Paying the $24 fee allows you to share that, all those passwords across two different platforms, which is kind of nice. And there's some other ones up here. Roboform is another one that's, that's pretty popular. So you can see that a lot of these are up there that are really good to use. Um, so those password managers, uh, uh, like I said, LastPass has a free app, uh, but it's just for the iPhone and it's just for the one single user. If you want multiple users, you've got to pay the fee. Um, so it keeps everything in what it calls a vault, and then you access it using the master password, and then you can see everything that's in it. Uh, you can also do a, a touch or a fingerprint or facial recognition to get into it uh, in the case of your iPhone. Um, you only need to remember the one password, the one to get you into the vault. That's what's nice about any of these um, password managers. Uh, all of your accounts and passwords can be configured to autofill your username and your password into the websites that you normally use. That's also very, very helpful for you. Now, some of these things will also have biometric tools in them, uh, recognizing your face or your fingerprint usually. Some of them have retinal scans. Um, uh, you might have facial recognition. Voice recognition is another one. Um, I found out the other night, I picked up my iPhone and I asked Siri to turn on my flashlight on my phone and it did it. I didn't know Siri would do that. Um, but voice recognition, facial recognition, fingerprints and retinal scans are all very popular, um, uh, very popular biometrics that can be used. Uh, they're pretty reliable in generally speaking. Um, in Illinois, the Biometric Information Privacy Act regulates the collection, use, and storage of biometric identifiers and biometric information. Because basically what these computers do, they take the information, the picture, the image of your face or your fingerprint, or it takes the uh, impression of your voice, and it, it converts it to a digital code, right? Well, that digital code must be kept secure because if somebody gets that digital code, they can obviously bypass the biometric uh, tools. Um, it prohibits the sale, lease, or information of biometric information. Um, uh, places a burden of, of uh, uh, a burden of case for the storage and safeguarding of the information. So you have to prove that you're doing this. And it requires a policy for retention and destruction of biometric information. It's different than written information. So the law has to require, they have to create laws now for biometric information. Generally, they're pretty reliable. There's some legal issues involved, as I've explained here. Um, my problem is, what happens if somebody cracks your digital code for your fingerprint or your face? The problem then is you've got one face. You've got one thumbprint on your right hand. One th you've got 10 fingerprints. That's all you've got, right? Um, you've got one voice. If someone cracks that, 
you can never use that source again. Uh, I'm still a big fan of the old uh, passwords that you create using random letters, random numbers, and random symbols. I think those are the best, most secure that you can have. What kind, well, if you do have biometrics, what are some of the tools you can use? Well, um, you got to decide, uh, first of all, where are these used? Well, often they're used uh, in hospitals, uh, used for banking. Uh, I, one of my banks I go to, I have to use a thumbprint to get into the vault where the um, uh, 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 no security boxes, um, safety deposit box. Uh, automotive can sometimes have biometrics. Uh, some of the automotives now have that where you put your thumbprint to start the car, or open the door. Um, uh, criminal investigations obviously use biometrics a lot. Um, do they really protect the data? Uh, it depends. Um, if they're secure, then they are. If they're not secure, if somebody breaks that, then it doesn't protect your data, right? Um, in the best practices area, you need to develop policies to address the collection, use, distribution, storage, and destruction of that data. You need to inform and disclose people how the information is being used. And you need to encrypt and secure any of that biometric data uh, that's being stored. There's also multi-factor identification, which you see often. This is where you not only combine with a password, but maybe with a, a second code or a token, uh, as in the case of a VPN, or maybe a, a biometric measure. So you use two measures to get in. Um, uh, it's not uncommon for you out well here on Tennessee Tech. Whenever I log onto the site, I have to type in my password. Then I have to click a button that sends a code to my phone, and I have to type that code in as well. So I have multi-factor identification. Um, uh, often that's in the form of a text message, maybe a number of something like that. Um, but it can be, it could be other things. It could be your voice, it could be um, uh, some kind of biometric measure um, that you have to put in as well. Um, so that's sort of an uh, overview of uh, how to protect your data in general uh, with passwords and how important it really is. Folks, if you're not putting, using passwords on your computers, on your files, if you're not encrypting data when it can be encrypted, you're putting yourself at risk and you need to fix that problem yesterday. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. We'll talk to you soon.